So I have the forks in and buttoned up and I'll show you them in a wee minute or two but um, first thing I want to do is before I get to that is I want to drain the um, the brake fluid out here because I'm trying to, I'm going to change out the calipers in uh, the next video after this one here so um, I just want to sort of open this here up and uh, drain the old uh, fluid out and remove the stock calipers okay I wouldn't expect the uh, the colour of this to be the greatest, but we'll have a look at it anyway. Yeah, look at that. Horrible. So we're just going to suck that out in a wee second. Here's a real good syringe, this uh, this one here. This is a Sealy one. There's it there. See that? That's a real good one there for... I, I like to I like to use that, you know, and it also pays to have a a cloth handy when you're doing this. But well, we'll just suck this here out. Look, see that? You know, I've had I've had loads of stuff. I've had mighty backs and uh, loads and loads of stuff, you know. But this syringe is as good as anything I've had. So there you go. We'll just remove the calipers. Okay, so I'm just going to uh, undo the calipers and um, and upgrade them to something else. Like, I mean, I don't I don't really have any issues with the uh, Takiko uh, six spot calipers stock ones. A lot of people don't like them and um, find uh, issues with them and say they're hard to bleed and stuff like that. I I don't have any issues with them at all. I think they're fine. Um, it's just that I just want to upgrade them for this uh, rebuild of this bike uh, to something else. And, um, you know, uh, obviously you've just seen that I've drained the fluid uh, from the reservoir. So I'm just going to unhook the um, the, the, the banjo bolt here. It's a 14 mil um, uh, spanner and just unhook that. And there will be a wee bit of um, fluid in the um, in the lines. And, and that's fine, you know, I mean, of an old... Of an old rag here, you know, just to sort of soak any any sort of drips and a, a wee sort of container here to sort of catch anything that might uh, drip down. But that's fine. Let's just unhook these here and um, and then um, that's that's it. Look, you can you can already see that. See that they're dripping out. Yeah, that's just what that's just the residue that's laying in the line, you know. And, um, but that's, you know, that's no problem. That's no problem. We're not, we're not overly bothered about that. That's, uh, that's to be expected, you know. Just whatever's in the line. Okay. So just let that do its thing. You know, drip down into this container. And I'll just do the other side. And then unhook those and that's it. Okay, so I was just machining the heads of these stainless steel um, uh, cap head bolts. These are the um, the pinch bolts, and uh, I have paired them up with these stainless steel spring washers, which are a perfect fit. And uh, I'll see what they look like when they're in. You know, with these washers, I may use them and I may not. You know, because 
Um, you know, the stock ones don't have any washers, but no, I I like those. I think they look they look uh, they they they'll be perfect for that. And also here, you'll see this big um this big wheel spacer here, this stainless steel wheel spacer. Now, um, you know, I, I've been saying from day one on this uh, on this build that I'm not running a stock uh, front wheel uh, speedo drive. My speedo uh, is driven off the counter shaft at, um, uh, you know, uh, the front sprocket. And um, so um, to replace the stock speedo drive that normally would be at the front wheel, I've machined this stainless steel wheel spacer here. Um, and uh, I was going to say it's pretty much a one-off. Well, it, it actually is a one-off. Um, the only other one that I made was an aluminium one as a prototype, um, which is which is uh, the uh, the one that's on my 2005 ZRX. And then um, this here is uh, a, a direct copy of it that uh, uh, is done in stainless steel just for this bike here. This is the wheel spacer also in stainless steel for the other side. And you'll also see here, I've bought a brand new front wheel axle here. Not even out of the packaging yet. And the, um, the nut for it or the collar for it, whatever uh, collar uh, that uh, Kawasaki terms it as, you know. I mean, there's nothing wrong with, uh, with the one that it was running in the bike. Um, it's just that for this uh, rebuild, I just wanted a complete uh, freshen up there. So I just went the extra mile and put it and, and bought a brand new um, stock wheel axle. Um, and uh, you might think that's a bit, oh, a bit over the top, but I believe you me, it's not because um, there's a titanium one of those in my um, 2005 bike. But no, this will be this will be a nice. Um, a nice uh, piece uh, to put in brand new and there uh, and uh, the collar to match as well and uh, so i'll just um i'll just fit those and uh, into the forks give you a wee look and uh, and then show uh, show you the forks and and talk uh, a little bit about them okay okay so we'll just slip this collar in dry And put the pinch bolts in here. You know, all this will be getting greased up whenever um, whenever I uh, come to fit it for for real after I put the front wheel in. But I'll just tip. I'll just nip these here up. Okay, and I put the axle in. Right. So that'll go like that. That one there will go like that. That there will go like that. Okay, and these two pinch bolts. Right, so that's that. Uh, here are the forks fitted into this bike. Um, I guess you waited long enough to see them, so there they are. So 
just giving you a real good look all around it there. And, you know, there'll be other things to do. There are other things to do because of new uh, brakes to go on. And I can't wait to get uh, stuck into those. The mud guard, front mud guard, the wheel, all of the body work, all of the bits and pieces to go on. And, uh, yeah, just want to get cracking on with that. But uh, just showing you absolutely everything and uh, let you see it just as I'm seeing it. You know, yeah, people look at that and I think, well, why did you, you know, I mean, you spent all that money on new axle and uh, all this, that and the other. But look, none of that really matters to me. <laughs> I mean, it's it's how it's come out in the end that, that that's that's really important. And uh, like I say, I'm I'm over the moon about it all. And uh, it's just as as I wanted it to be. And um, I suppose I'd just better finish off by saying um, some people might be wondering, they might not be wondering, because everybody has their own ideas, is, well, what would be your um, suspension settings? And, um, you know, that's a subjective thing. You know, everybody has their own ideas as to what works for them and what would be right for them and, you know, I'm I don't uh, I don't really um, I'm not really much of uh, an expert on stuff like that, you know, but I'll tell you who is. And that is um, uh, Dave Moss. My Dave Moss would be the suspension guru that's out there. Uh, you know, certainly, I mean, anything that he says about suspension and uh, uh, setting up a bike, I would uh, I would I would take it on board because he's the man. And, uh, you know, he, I was reading recently there that he, um, he got the loan on one of these bikes. It was a 2002, um, for the, you know, he was doing a tour of, I uh, can't remember where, it was, I think it was either South Africa or New Zealand or some one of them places. But, um, anyway, he got the bike and it was just, um, you know, he, he, he decided to share or do some testing to, to, to set the suspension up to suit him and, uh. You know, I've I've just copied that, um, and uh, but of course, you know, I mean, it, it all has to suit yourself, you know. But my my, uh, I would weigh, you know, because you've got to take into consideration your, uh, you know, the sag of, uh, and um, uh, your weight and all of that business. But look, I weigh with my with my gear on, with my riding gear on, about thirteen stone, and uh, so that's about one hundred and eighty pounds or thereabouts. So I've set up my uh, suspension as per <laughs> Dave Moss's recommendations for that weight. And um, and I'll just share that with you and you take from that what you wish. Everybody has their own ideas and uh, and uh, want to take it on board or disregard it when, up to yourself. But look, he he uh, he um, has three lines or three. Yes, three lines on the preload adjuster, which is what I have set mine to, you can see it there. Um, the rebound uh, adjuster there, uh, he set his to four clicks out, which is, that's what he recommended that worked best. And uh, I've done that, four clicks out. And uh, also he has uh, to give the front end, uh, um, you know, to make the front end of the bike a wee bit more planted, give it a wee bit more bias at the front. Um, uh, 10 millimeters above the with those settings, 10 millimeters to the top of the cap from the top of the uh, the 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 top, the you know, the, the top yoke 10 millimeters. That's what he done, and uh, I've done likewise. And um, uh, using 10 weight uh, uh, oil fork oil, which was what I'm doing, and also for um, uh, compression setting here. Is uh, three clicks out, which is is these. Some people say, "Oh no, you've got to you've got to have them fully, fully in." And uh, you know, no, no, uh, uh, you know, just have it completely and absolutely, you know, bottomed out. And um, but look, he said three out, so I've put three <laughs> three out on mine. Some people don't click at all. And these didn't budge whenever I started restoring these forks. and uh, But I got them freed up, as you will have seen in one of the other videos. And uh, But if it doesn't click, if you don't get a click, um, each uh, 
quarter turn of that is a click. So um, mine, mine does. So uh, uh, anyway, that's what that is. Three clicks out. So now we'll turn our attention to the rear shocks. And uh, these are stock rear shocks. And, um, you know, all the suspension in this uh, 2001 is stock. But anyway, uh, Dave Moss recommended that uh, he found that the best setting for him um, was uh, number four on the rebound, uh, which is what I have set that to. I just copied what this man done and uh, hope that it works good for me too. Um, number two on the compression setting. And number two, second softest on the uh, on the uh, uh, the the preload adjuster, and uh, the other thing that uh, needs to be mentioned is that the uh, the bike that he was using, um, uh, and he was using it. It was on the road, like it wasn't on the track or anything. He was just using it to tour around uh, New Zealand, and. Um, so anyway, he was he was running a Michelin two CT Pilot Road twos, and uh, the 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 uh, initially set the tire pressure to forty four uh, on the rear and forty two on the front uh, cold, uh, but then whenever the tires got hot, he found that um, it was just a little bit too much, and you could feel every bump and every tiny little pebble so he dropped he dropped both the tire price both front and rear tire tire pressures a further uh three psi so uh to round it off uh, uh, he just settled on uh, 41 on the rear and 39 on the front so look i mean that, that's the information that i got from uh from uh what he um he uh put down there and um i've just uh I I can't I can I I've no way of knowing whether it's uh, whether it's going to work and I just can't wait to get the bike out onto the uh, onto the road this summer and uh, if we ever do get a summer and uh, and see how it uh, see how it performs and if it does that'll be if it performs great with all those settings and recommendations well that'll be fantastic and if it doesn't then we'll back to the drawing board and we'll have to tinker a lot another wee bit you know but. Um, but there it is, guys. Look, um, I'll just uh, give you another close-up of these um, forks uh, that you can see them for yourself. Um, there you go. And, uh, yeah. So glad I went to the extra bother of, uh, of doing them, you know. And... Um, but there it is. There they are. Um, yep. So it's it's worked out really well, you know. So anyway, guys, look, I'm going to wrap it up there. And, um, you know, I'll, uh, thanks for tuning in. And um, as ever, stay tuned for the next one. Bye.